According to Newsweek.com, Donald Trump's approval rating surpasses Obama's. And get this, not just on Rasmussen reports. There are a couple reasons this is significant. For one, Rasmussen tends to be pretty favorable towards the president. They show many polls that have him just just around 50%, sometimes over. There's also Zogby, which recently had a poll showing Trump at 51% approval. Most other polls show Trump below 50%. Very different to strange contrast. So Newsweek is highlighting it's not just Rasmussen, it's the aggregate. The aggregate shows Trump above Obama for the same time period. There's another really important reason this is so significant. The negative press. I've got some sources to go through showing you that not only is Trump facing an uphill battle, but that Obama was facing a downhill battle. The media really liked Obama, and I've got the stories to back it up. I don't want to act like it's definitive. It's just some references going to the past that show, to a certain extent, the media did like Obama. We can see it in magazine covers, and they really don't like Trump, and the data does show it. But before we get into all of this, what we're going to do, we're going to start with this story, look at the data, compare it to the past, and then we'll look at some more facts. And I want to talk about why Trump's approval rating is going up. CNN recently did a story about how Trump is flipping a Democratic stronghold to Republicans. Get this. These Democrats in this northern Minnesota town are still voting Democrat locally, but voting for Trump for president. It's very strange, but there's good reason for it. And we'll get to that. But first, the story from Newsweek about Donald Trump's approval rating. Before we read that, however, go to TimCast.com slash donate if you would like to support my work. There's a PayPal option, a crypto option, a physical address. But of course, the best way to support me, subscribe to the channel, comment, or share this video. YouTube deranks independent political commentary, although I think recently they kind of like me, but the data does suggest they're propping up CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, and putting obstacles in the way of channels like mine. I think the story is important. A lot of people don't seem to understand this. There are people who are trapped in this echo chamber of the mainstream media, you know, high profile, powerful digital outlets. They don't seem to realize that Donald Trump does have legitimate support from people who are concerned about the economy. But if you watch, if you read even Newsweek, I'm surprised Newsweek's running the story. Newsweek is going to say, you know, orange man bad. Look, I get it. You know, going back in, in, in U.S. history, People disagree with the other politician, but it's never been this bad, has it? You don't got to like the guy, but please base your thoughts in reality. At least that's what I tried doing. Not a big fan, but I'm trying to be honest. Look, people like him. There's the data. More than Obama with an uphill battle. I think that's significant. Let's read. Newsweek says, President Donald Trump's approval rating this week averaged across major polls, uh, surpassed that of his predecessor, Barack Obama, at the same time eight years ago, giving some actual good news to Trump, who is known to cite only conservative-leaning polls to bolster his image. Trump's approval rating on Wednesday was 44.3%, according to the, R- the Real Clear Politics average of more than half a half dozen major polls. That is higher than Obama's average approval rating of 43.9% on September 18th, 2011, by the same measure. The 45th president's average approval rating surpassed that of his predecessor on Monday and stayed on top for the next two days. Trump's average approval rating on Monday was, we'll look at the chart, but I want to stress, this is so significant, it warranted an article from Newsweek. I kid you not. They're just as, you know, they're so shocked, like, whoa, Trump averaging higher than Obama? We got to write a story about this. You'd think they wouldn't care. You know, they love to talk about how Trump has never, you know, he's lower than all the other presidents. They like to smear him and act like everybody hates the guy, but it's just not true. I remember uh, an anecdote. There's this uh, financial guy. He's a, a TV host. He was him and his uh, his wife, I believe, were telling me that in Europe, all the news pointed to Trump being detested and everyone hated him. And then when they finally came back to the States and saw all the signs everywhere, they realized something was wrong in the press. And then Trump won. This is significant because people, they expect the conservative media to prop Trump up and for the legitimate mainstream press, which come on, has a bias, we know it, is going to be honest. But here we are, even with the aggregate, all of these polls that don't like him, he has just surpassed Obama. Check this out. For the past, uh, up until the 18th, two days ago, Trump was above Obama in the aggregate. It's impressive. Trump has not tweeted this week about achieving a higher average approval rating than Obama, 
whom he has continued to criticize. But on Monday, the day after he came out ahead of Obama, Trump tweeted an image of himself with 50% approval rating attributed to the conservative Rasmussen reports, which consistently rates him higher than other major polls. Yes, that's true. However, I think we have to point out some details. Now, let's move on to some facts. First, Rasmussen reports nailed it in 2016. They say Rasmussen reports final White House watch survey showed Democrat Hillary Clinton with a 2% popular vote lead over Trump. That's what happened. They were right. Rasmussen's been wrong in the past. I think we're seeing something interesting here. I think Rasmussen has figured out how to find Trump's base and everyone else hasn't. It's also true that Rasmussen was the least accurate in 2018. The reason for this, in my opinion, there was a New York Times story talking about how Trump's base did not show up in the midterms. I think Rasmussen's figured out how to, tra- figured out how to track Trump's base, but not core, like not core Republicans. So what happens is in the midterms, when Trump's base doesn't show up, they were wrong. They thought Trump's base would. They didn't get it right. But when Trump is running, so this is why 2020 might, you know, it, Trump is probably favored for that, at least in my opinion, they're probably tracking that correctly. So I want to stress Rasmussen has been, you know, good on some, bad on some. And so they often show Trump favorably. But even now, we can see the average 44.7. There it is. So let's talk about why it's so significant outside of the aggregate. Because of this, here's a story from Investors Business Daily. Media Trump hatred shows in 92% negative coverage of his presidency. You mean to tell me that Donald Trump has been able to surpass Barack Obama at the same time this year, facing 92% negative news? That is impressive. It's particularly impressive when you look at the stories of the past. How about this one from 2013? Why does the media go easy on Barack Obama? Many conservatives think it's evidence of liberal bias. But is it even true that conservative uh, but but is it even true that conservatives are more willing to be adversarial on important topics? This is a story from 2013 highlighting that Barack Obama got a got a free pass most of the time. The media, you know, let him slide on a lot of issues. There's a meme that goes around showing Time magazine covers. For Obama, it's all him standing there valiantly. For Trump, it's like fires, it's criticism, it's negative, it's insulting. In one of these stories, I think it might be this one right here. Check this out. This is a story called Ending the Media Romance with Obama. Check this out. Like any multi-headed beast, the press can fall in love. But its love is difficult to measure and tends toward the fickle. According to a Pew Research study of the 2008 general election, Obama coverage was somewhat more positive than negative, but not markedly so, while McCain coverage was heavily unfavorable and became more unfavorable over time. The two candidates received about the same amount of media attention in general, and Obama's support in the polls climbed steadily during the general campaign. Even when the news turned negative against him, such as after the second presidential debate in early October. I don't want to act like Trump, uh, I'm sorry, like Obama only ever got a free ride. I'm just pointing out that even Pew Research said after 2008, his positive was somewhat, was slightly more positive and McCain, the Republican, was heavily negative. The media bias exists. In fact, there's a really funny story. I didn't pull it up. It talks about how Fox News acknowledged that Trump was doing things and they praised him, but they said, wouldn't we be ragging on Obama for doing the same thing? And there it is. We know Fox News is conservative. They're going to favor the Republican and criticize the Democrat. However, all of the other media does that in the inverse. So that's why things are so, I don't know, scary to a certain extent, right? Fox News is more than willing to prop up conservatives and defend them. But what about CNN, NBC, you know, HLN, whatever, MSNBC, they don't. They defend Obama, they put him on magazine covers, and they slam the president. And this is what happens, right? Conservative, Democrat, etc. But this shows us the media bias. It's real, okay? I don't, I don't know how much data, more data you need to prove it. This is a story from October 10th that 92% of the stories about Trump are negative. And this is from Media Research Center, which I believe is conservative. So again, take it all with a grain of salt. But come on, if even Newsweek thinks it's newsworthy that Donald Trump surpassed Obama, well, there you go. So let's do this. Uh, well, so, so here's another source here. I'm not going to get too much into it because I think I made that point already. Just showing that the candidates in 2012, 
did re receive more negative than positive coverage. I just want to highlight that Obama didn't get a completely free ride. It just tended towards being better on him uh, than otherwise. I do want to highlight this. Whenever I see a story talking about Trump's approval ratings or whatever, I definitely want to make sure I highlight the fact that, you know, there, there, there's, there's averages here. It's not all going to be, you know, Skittles and rainbows just because they have his average now showing it's doing really, really well. I want to fact check that. What's different about this compared to what I normally do, you know, you'll see a story from Rasmussen, Trump approval rating, and then I'll basically give you my thoughts on why it's so great for Trump. Look, all these other polls show him doing pretty bad. This one for Rasmussen is probably the best he's ever had at 52%. Normally, I highlight the average to say, even with that really great single poll, let's look at what they all say. Now I'm showing you this to kind of make the opposite point. <laughs> they're all saying he's doing well, okay? Doing, uh, they still have him negative for sure. Minus 10, minus 12, you know, minus nine, but better than Obama. I don't necessarily need to fact check the New York, uh, Newsweek here. There it is. However, Town Hall, which is conservative, wants to give some pushback. And I think it's very important to kind of, you know, look, if people get this idea in their head, that their candidate is guaranteed to win, they get lazy. If they think their, their, their candidate is guaranteed to lose, they get lazy. Some people think Hillary Clinton lost because everyone was so sure she was going to win, they didn't even show up. Maybe. I just want to make sure we simmer down the arrogance. It may be good news for Trump, but this story goes on to say that, yeah, sure, Trump may, may have surpassed Obama. It was a rocky period in his presidency, but Obama did resoundingly better across the board. And it's the first time Trump has ever surpassed him and has never averaged above 50%. Sure, you can cite Rasmussen, fine. I think it's important to kind of, you know, pull back expectations. A lot of people are going to jump up and down and cheer and say, ha, ah, Trump's finally doing it. But in the end, I want to make sure I point out, while it is significant that Trump is surpassing Obama with this negative press climbing uphill, it doesn't mean too much. Comparing him to Obama, does it mean he'll win? Not entirely sure. I think Trump is on track to win 2020 for a lot of other reasons. Notably that the Democrats are all kind of weak in terms of the candidates. Their policies are extreme. If you watch my second channel, you'd have seen me talking about Beto O'Rourke's AMA on Reddit, where he just got slammed hard by people when talking about immigration and the Second Amendment. People were not having it. He stepped out into reality and they said, dude, you're nuts. However, Everybody thinks once the Democratic nominee wins, they'll walk everything back to the center. I don't believe it because progressives won't vote for a moderate. So we'll see what happens. I think this is interesting. This says more about, you know, uh, Trump overcoming negative press than it does about actual approval ratings, right? You can say, look, all of these polls have always been negative about Trump. I don't trust them. To an extent, I don't even trust Rasmussen. Rasmussen got 2016 right, so maybe they understand the presidency better. They got 2018 wrong. So I'm not a big fan of the polls. I do think because of the economy, because of, you know, low, low uh, unemployment, all of these factors, Trump is going to win. And even CNN did a story, but I, I've got a few things I want to go through. So let's go to this story. Newsweek says Fox News poll shows Trump losing to every Democratic frontrunner. This is from today. I want to highlight this as well, because I want to say these polls must be wrong. They must be wrong. I don't know how we judge you know, uh, Obama versus Trump or whatever. But how could you say in 2016 Trump was going to lose and now be saying the exact same thing when everything's better, when Trump's base is larger? Trump is doing better than Obama in the aggregate. And you're still saying he's going to lose? Obama is the most popular, you know, Democratic president of this. I, I don't know what the time frame is, but, they, but that's it. He's the most popular Democratic president. We'll leave it there. Or he's still wildly popular. Democrats love Obama. Trump is doing better than Obama based, you know, where he was today. And you think Trump is going to lose the Democrats? This is why in the end, the polls must be crazy. You know, do we trust the aggregate polls? The aggregate is probably going to be better than any individual poll. So why would I trust these? I wouldn't. Well, let's do this. Let's move on. Fox News poll from today. Voters are frustrated with government and nervous about the economy. Fox News reports. They say, while 37% feel confident about the economy, 48% feel nervous. That's up from a low of 43% nervous in March. At the highest point, 70% felt nervous in 2010 when the question was first asked. And it was 61% as recently as 2016. I can't tell you, I don't want to extrapolate too much. I'm not, uh, I'm not a wizard or a psychic. But I will say, in my personal opinion, 
If people are nervous about the economy, they're not going to vote out an incumbent. They're going to vote for status quo. These, so, so it's a minority, right? It's not the majority of people who are scared. But I believe these 48% are likely to say, don't rock the boat. Changing presidents is going to, is going to rock the market, and it's going to be bad for a lot of people. I bet this, in my opinion, this shows people are pro- this 48% are likely to vote for the president. So he's got these advantages. The economy is good, and people are nervous. So they're probably going to say, just, just, just carry on. Just go for it. So now let's talk about, um, I guess, I guess we've, we've gone through the polls. I, I think we've kind of, uh, you know, I, I've made that point. And I want to talk about why I think Trump's approval rating is going up. For one, this is a good segue into that. People are nervous about the economy, man. It's kind of like, imagine you're at the, a casino and you keep betting it all on black and you keep winning. At a certain point, you're getting nervous. Like it can't keep coming up winners, right? It's all sevens all the way down. It can't be that way. Something bad's going to happen at some point. People are getting nervous. Well, they're not going to, in my, and the way I see it is they're not going to vote out Trump. They're going to say, hey man, it's going really, really great. Let's keep it going, right? That's when we see this story, which I highlighted early on. They say CNN's Mark Savage speaks with voters in a democratic stronghold in Minnesota as local attitudes about politics begin to shift. In this story, you hear a guy say that his, you know, his, his, his uncle, his brothers, whatever, were, were union Democrats. Not anymore. Well, you know why? Trump is defending the, the rural areas, the mining towns, the manufacturing, the tariffs. People like this in these places. Trump is talking about strengthening the economy and bringing back their jobs. A lot of these small towns, and trust me, I know I've been looking for property. We're expanding, right? And we're finding a lot of small towns with, with tragic addiction. I'll put it that way. I'm try, I'll try to be light. I don't want to get too much into it because YouTube will punish me. But yeah, things are bad in these small towns. Jobs are drying up. People are getting sick and addicted. Trump is speaking to these places, these places that used to be about Democrats and unions. What are the, what are the Democrats offering? Uh, taxpayer health care to non-citizens? Sorry, it's not going to work. 2A restrictions and confiscation? These people live in rural areas. They probably hunt. They probably do all this. The Democrats have gone so far off, you know, off the rails that Trump is the closest they have, and they're flipping. Check this out. Politico. Trump hopes to seize a core Democratic voting bloc. The president's 2020 campaign wants to capitalize on discomfort among disaffected workers if they can look past a manufacturing slowdown under the weight of Trump's trade war. You don't understand, you know, I I feel like these outlets don't get it. Trump's trade war is on their behalf. It might hurt some groups. It may be bad. There may be collateral damage or, or blowback for Trump. But you have this story from CNN. They mention in this story that the people in this town, they mine a core component for steel manufacturing. And Trump's tariffs on steel, they like. They don't care about, all they, all they want to hear is Trump is fighting for them to bring back their jobs, to bring back their industry. And he is. Whatever the results may be is less important than someone saying, I'm here for you. Look, I can't tell you exactly how these people think, but I think it's fair to say at least some of them are probably worried that Trump's trade war could be bad in the long run. However, Trump is making that move to help them. Trump may fail. His policies might not work. But they're sitting here desperate, hearing that someone is trying. And I'm sure that's enough. Let's read a little bit. Political reports. Chuck Nissel, a fourth generation coal miner from small town West Virginia, was dismayed when Hillary Clinton told a group of Ohio voters in 2016 she planned to, quote, to put a lot of coal miners and coal companies out of business if elected president. A comment Clinton later said she regretted more than any other on the campaign trail. What was she thinking? The the, the Democrats, the party of ending jobs and taking away your career. That's absurd. Listen, we got to be real. Some jobs will cease to exist. Coal mining might go away. But you've got to be out of your mind. If you're going to go to go to West Virginia and say this, or I'm sorry, I don't think she actually said it to them. She said it to Ohio voters. You know, she's trying to pander, and these people don't realize we're in the age of social media. There were, there were some instances where Hillary Clinton put on like a Southern drawl. It's like, do you not realize these videos are going to go viral and everyone's going to see you pandering? This is the problem Democrats face. They used to be able to go wherever and say whatever they had to say to get the votes. But now the videos go viral. And you hear Bernie Sanders saying things like, we got to have secure, secure borders. What, like four or five months ago? Then you hear him saying, we're going to end all deportation. Well, which is it, buddy? Depending on who he's talking to, yeah, they're pandering. It's what politicians have always done in the past. 
A politician could say whatever they wanted in small town Ohio and no one would hear about it. In the age of social media, we're going to find out. We're going to see those clips and we're going to call you a hypocrite and a liar. They say, so when Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden declared at a primary debate this summer that he would eliminate fossil fuels, coal and fracking as president, Nissel said he couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, could you not see how devastating that was for Clinton? It was an albatross that sealed the deal for anyone who had any questions about her. That's from Nissel, a union officer for the United Mine Workers of America, who said he won't support Trump in 2020, but worries the current 2020 Democrats are repeating past mistakes. They're pro-union, but anti-coal. They say, we'll support you, but we'll just find you another occupation, and that's not, go- and that's not going to happen. Here's the best part. They're not going to learn to code. Okay, no, 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 but here's the real best part. Trump's approval rating can go up, not because he changes anything, but because the Democrats are freaking people out. As Bill Maher said, if the Democrats want to win, they have to be less, they, they have to be less crazy than Trump, and they're even screwing that up. I kid you, he said twice, more than one occasion. What do you think this is? A union Democrat saying, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Could they not see how devastating that was for Clinton? So I'll tell you what, they might really hate Trump, but then they look, it's, it's all relative, right? They look at the Democrats and they're like, that's crazy. They look, they look at Trump and they go, Ugh, I guess, I guess, because Trump is not as scary and crazy as the Democrats. No matter what you want to believe, you know, Trump's got really bad character defects, Everybody seems to know it. (laughs) I talk to people. I talk to people who are even Trump supporters who recognize he has character flaws. But often I hear from the more moderate Republican types that they don't care because they don't have to like the guy to recognize his policy is is, is better. And I think that's what's going to happen. That's going to benefit Trump. It doesn't matter how it, it doesn't matter if it's every Democrat. It just matters that Democrats lose voters. Trump can be the worst person in the world. He might not gain a single vote. But here we can see the Democrats are losing this base. It's not just this one story from Politico. It's CNN saying it too. I mean, come on. The warning signs are here. Alarms are going off and the Democrats don't get it. Trump, as of right now, is an aggregate polling above Obama's. Get your act together. They're not going to though. The Democratic Party is fractured and weak. So I don't know. I don't know. You know what? You've got people like Tulsi. Yang's been bothering me a bit lately. I'm, I'm really upset with a lot of what Yang's been doing, but you know, I'm not, I'm not completely off the Yang, Yang track. I still think he's doing a good job and he's speaking about things that are very important, especially to, to, to you know, industries in rural America, autom- automation. It's going to be taking out trucker jobs and delivery jobs. So I think it's really important that Yang's talking about it, but he's been, he's been, he's done some things. I've been, I've been a, li- a bit let down. That's so I'm sad to say. But Tulsi Gabbard, I think, has actually done a lot better, you know, going on the Rubin Report, talking about her positions. The media hates her. They ex- they, the, the DNC hates her. You know what? You get what you deserve, man. They always do this. There is a sane, rational group of politically active people that just want a calm and reasonable debate. And just write down your plan, right? It's that simple. Write down something, talk to people and say, what if we do this? Instead, we get platitudes, we get extreme positions, and we get the same mistakes repeated from 2016 to the point where a union guy, a union Democrat guy says, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Well, you reap what you sow. I don't know how many, how many warning bells you need before you change course. The Democrats aren't going to do it. We'll see what happens. Stick around. Next segment will be coming up at youtube.com slash timcastnews at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you all there.